If there's one team I've been most impressed by this season, it's easily Cloud9. Throughout the majority of the season, they have looked unflappable and dominant. They have a flashy, tempo-based playstyle that is invigorating to watch and depressing to play against. In the regular season, Cloud9 went 8-1, and one, matched only by Loud, who you might remember from my last video, are absolute demons when it comes to playing Valorant. And from this dominant performance in the regular season, they secured their spot in round one of the upper bracket. But when it mattered most, frankly, Cloud9 choked. They had an absolute shocker versus EG. They got 2 0 by the underdogs. Right now, this is it. This is all or nothing for Cloud9. Calm's watching it, guys. This is it. This is how it ends. Zep was the last one up. <laughs> Look at Divi1 going for it. I want it, I want it. The flash and the kill delivers. They prove Lightning can strike the same place twice. Evil geniuses, welcome to Tokyo. Jeez, look at this guy, he's loving it. Yeah, it was a little rough uh, to be a C9 fan on that day. Didn't go too well for us. It got absolutely rolled. So, down to the lower bracket, C9 went. Down in the lower bracket, C9 faced off against Leviathan, and they won 2-1, knocking Leviathan out and pitting C9 against NRG for a spot in the lower bracket finals. Now, despite this, call me crazy, but I have my money on C9 to take the whole thing. As of recording this, that match against NRG hasn't been played, so this video... Uh could age poorly. But I am willing to take that risk, ladies and gentlemen, because I have faith in C9. And let me show you why. See, Cloud9's dominance as a pro team does not lie in Leaf, their duelist, and his ability to click on people with finesse. Every ascendant lobby on the planet has at least one corpse-voiced Discord daddy who can tap heads to a chorus of adaras from his legions of e-kittens. Cloud9's dominance also doesn't stem from their knowledge of obscure Viper one-ways. My friend Dylan knows a Viper one-way, uh, and Dylan is in Iron, and that's likely where they're going to stay. It's not Cloud9's drilled site executions, it's not their innovative plant spots, so don't get me wrong, all of these things do play a part, but the biggest reason Cloud9 is dominating the VCT Americas competition uh, is their, uh, and I know this is boring, but, but it's their solid fundamentals. You've probably heard that term tossed around before, fundamentals, uh, and it means different things in different contexts. Uh, but in this context, what I mean is that Cloud9 generally displays a masterclass in taking good fights, creating an advantage, and playing decisively. Now, that's a lot of Valorant theory and words, and it's very boring, and it's not what we're here for, so what I want to do is look at this in context. Um, we're going to watch a game that was played between Cloud9 and Leviathan. It was in the regular season, so it wasn't in the playoffs, it wasn't most recent, uh, but it is still quite recent. It was played in, I think, week 7 of the regular season, so it's like only 14 or 15 days ago. Uh, it's on Lotus, and no spoilers, but it's an absolute stomp in favor of Cloud9. So it's, it's a brilliant showcase of Cloud9's fundamentals and, and just what makes this team so lethal. I don't want to look at the whole game, by the way, because as I said, 90% of this game is just is just a one-sided stomp. Um, the first round I do want to look at is round seven. Um, but to give context, I'm just going to quickly run through everything that happens leading up to it. It's going to be it's going to be bloody quick. Here we go. Round one, C9 are on attack. They fake A pressure, break the door, and clear B. And the spike goes down on some really good sky play, forces all of Leviathan to play off site. And there are five players alive for each team, and the spike is ticking away. Mazino, who is playing Omen for Leviathan, it's a name you're going to hear a lot, he's on a flank, and he takes out Jake, but he gets traded by Zeppa. C9 rotate off the site and watch the spike through main. Leviathan, under time pressure, are forced to peek into the bullets and just get absolutely massacred. The pistol round goes to C9. I mean, the fight up front, and it's all going to go in favor of Cloud9. Round two, Leviathan won A main control. Leaf, however, <laughs> is already there. So he jumps on top of the rock and just spits down Mazino and King with a Spectre. He gets traded by Nauza, who himself gets traded by Jake. And suddenly it's a 4v2 in favor of C9, who also has the better guns. And now it's a free plant on C, and then it's hunting season. The last two plays of Leviathan fall to Spectre spit, and round two is to C9. Stuck between a Molly and a hard place, and now Taco's in equally as bad position. Round three, both teams decide they want A main control, and when the barriers drop, it is an absolute mess. Leaf sprints out and picks Taco with a one-tap. That's going to be a, a common feature. Uh, Mazino blind TPs in. The Sky Flash lands, and now they know he's there. Mazino gets blinded twice, but at the same time, Nauza takes out Leaf, takes out Zeppa, and Mazino sprays down Jake. Zelsa shuts down Nauza, but is traded by Mazino, who is then traded by Rooney. Rooney now in a 1v2, walks up quietly, grabs the Vandal, clears his corners, uh, and decides to reload. Which it turns out is a really big mistake, he just gets brain blasted by King. Leviathan takes round 3 sitting on A, and round 4, C9 decided they've had enough of A. A sucks. 
so sees more their style. Leaf decided that Valorant is a children's game, so he's embraced his inner solo queue demon. He sprints up C main and just absolutely fucking wallbangs two people, presumably to a chorus of ara aras from his grown ass man teammates. Um, Zephyr comes to let Nowza live so he can get the kill and type sky diff in all chat. Nowza goes down, and all five C9 players are still alive. Two Leviathan players alive, the plant goes down, C9 go hunting. And not one person anchors on the damn spike. All of C9 want kills. Um, but unfortunately, they don't find him. Uh, round 4 is a flawless from C9. It just looked unbelievably easy. Coming into round 5, just want to let everyone know, Taco, Leviathan's duelist, is 0-4. Is um, bit of a rough game for him. Uh, Leviathan wants C main control, fair enough. And C9 wants to fake C and hit A. Uh, and the barriers drop and an absolute cacophony of util is used on C-mount. All five of C9's players move to hit A. And they play slow, but Leaf, after realizing that there are no e-girls to impress on his team, turned off his wall hacks and walks right into his death. The attackers pop Killjoy ult and secure a site. The spike goes down. Uh, and this round is particularly fun to watch, so um, it's not any worth any analysis from me. But I'm just going to let the commentators talk you through what happens, because it's pretty cool. And I imagine Leviathan are going to want to use that to funnel out onto the side, off the back of the paranoia, off the back of the cabbages, follow and fill in on the space that's been left. Taco still up in heaven. Wow. Never made his way out. King is finding more value. Players but it's just Rooney and King one now. Enemy remaining. Both controllers. 1v1. Rooney. First shot's go a bit wide. He's going to get a second shot at this. Unless King just sticks it the whole way. He's gotten it to half. No He's way. gotten it three quarters of the way. Pulls off and Rooney gets the 1v1. Round 5 to C9. The end there where King tried to stick the defuse in a 1v1 against Rooney is absolutely hilarious. Because Rooney is the player famous for sticking the fuses in a 1v1. He was always going to check. Anyway, round 6 is the last round I'm going to speed through before we take a close look at just how C9 is doing so unbelievably well. Uh, and C9's gun loadout in this round, by the way, is 13,000 creds more expensive. So they're absolutely stomping this game. Uh, just keep that in mind. Cloud9 choose to start the round by getting information on both C and A. Uh, they're probing to see which site is less well defended. And they find that C is the pushover, and so within 10 seconds of the round starting, all five C9 players are pushing C after showing presence elsewhere. Now that's pretty cool. Um, they all get stalled at the choke by Leviathan's Viper Smoke, but Leaf is having absolutely none of it. C9 pops Seekers, and Leaf just breaks the choke open. Jake follows with a TP and one taps King. The spike goes down 5v4 on C. Viper's Pit plume blooms on sight. Leaf takes out Mazino the second he peeks into the pit, and Jake dies to Taco. Uh, and now it's time for a quick little pause to congratulate Taco on his first kill of the match. Congratulations. Uh, to be fair, I don't give him enough credit. Valorant is a really hard game. Uh, and uh, he proves that here in a second because he peeks Leaf on his angle and just gets put down. Uh, and then it's an absolutely gorgeous fast lane by Leaf. Uh, Nowza, however, manages to find an off angle and, and sprays down Leaf. Rudy trains Nowza right as Zelsus uh, is killjoy gapped by Shy. Uh, and Shy fakes the defuse and then just pumps bullets into Rooney's eyes. But unfortunately for Leviathan, no time remains and the spike explodes C9 with five round wins to Leviathan's one. Round seven. And now it's time finally to pause and take a closer look at what's going on. How are they winning so hard? The first thing we need to do is simply pause and just think about what it is that we just watched. Uh, I've just shown you six rounds, and in four of them, Cloud9 absolutely stomped. One of them was a win because a spike exploded, and then one of them, Cloud9 got outgunned and destroyed. So generally, their attack is going insanely well, and when you're trying to understand why, it's important to think about common denominators. I'll list off a couple of the most important ones. Uh, number one, in every single round, Cloud9 got the spike down, um, with the exception of round three. We don't talk about round three. Number two, in almost every single round, Cloud9 would be the team that would get the first kill. And then number three, again, in almost every round, that first kill that Cloud9 would get would be assisted. So it wasn't just one guy showing mechanical brilliance, it was a team play to get that first kill. Now, these might just sound like things that happened, but it's indicative of the way that Cloud9 thinks about the game. It's very objective-based. Cloud9, almost more than any other team, uses fundamental Valorant mechanics, like playing towards your gun, like combining util to take space, like never taking fair fights, to put the spike on the ground on attack and prevent the spike from getting planted on defense. With all of this in mind, I want to look at round 7. I'm going to start by looking at the economy. 
In terms of the economy, both teams have a full buy. Leviathan are doing the cool light shields thing that people do to punish people who buy vandals every round. Um, but yeah, it, it's essentially a full buy for both teams. After economy, next thing to look at is the positioning. Cloud9 is playing 2 on C, 3 on A. Uh, remember, their plan is to create an early advantage and then to clinically and decisively capitalize on that advantage to put the spike down. Um, now, you might not have noticed because I did rush through the rounds, but on defense, Leviathan have a tendency to three-man push and leave behind their Killjoy and Viper to anchor. Cloud9 have definitely noticed this, and this round they want to create their advantage by punishing that three-man push. Here's their plan. At the start of the round, they're going to Skyflash Mound to see if Leviathan are pushing. They're then going to Omen Smoke C Main to de deny Leviathan from having information. Zelsus, the Killjoy, is sitting with Zeppa to provide safety, and the other three C9 players are all sat on A. This strategy achieves a couple of things. Number one, it'll allow C9 to immediately identify if they are being pushed, and where they are being pushed. If Leviathan run down C, they get detected by the Skyflash. If they go A, their Util and Footsteps will be audible to the three C9 players on A. And if they push out B, it's the same deal. Util and Footsteps will give away the position. If C9 know about a push, they can prepare for it and give them a favorable engagement. The best thing for C9 is that with this strategy, they've actually exactly predicted what is about to happen. C9, when the round starts, will have perfect information. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how they use this. So good. When it came to this map early on in the season, like when you think about the barriers drop and Leviathan immediately execute their A push. The Omen Blind gives them away, and C9 responds by immediately giving the space. And they do it loudly. They run. They don't walk. All except for Leaf, who slowly walks into an off angle, holding the door. And this is classic C9 behavior. And I hate to pause so fast, but this is why I made the video. You think about it from Leviathan's perspective, what has just happened? You're playing against C9, a team that has shown previously this game that they are prone to rotating at light speed. You push up A and hear two pairs of feet scurrying away, so it's logical that whoever was on A for C9 noped out and is now rotating to fast hit another site. And for Leviathan, there is such an obvious play. If you're fast enough, you can catch C9 mid-rotate and then gun them down while they're in spawn. There's no cover in spawn. And so, let's see what happens when Leviathan capitalize on this glaring opportunity. Oh no. There's the ult. Yikes. Okay, first of all, just fucking amazing shooting. Like, what a shot from Leaf. Uh, second of all, you might look at that and think, Jesus, tunnel vision, Taco sucks. And, like, I have been dumpstering on Taco this video, with justification as well. But this play is actually the logical decision based off of the information they had. And thirdly, this is the perfect demonstration of C9's fundamentals. C9 was 100% aware of the fact that a push was coming out of Leviathan. They had every single opportunity they could imagine to contest. Leaf could have sprinted out and gone for a one-tap. Jake had his own omen blind. They could have gone for that play, and they could have contested the space A main, but they didn't. Why? Because it would have been a fair fight. And C9, frankly, just aren't looking for fair fights. They're looking to create an advantage. If C9 could throw pebbles in the eyes of Leviathan's players at the start of every round, they would. Because C9 understand Valorant isn't about honorable aim duels. It's about never, ever taking a fair fight. Because sometimes, you lose fair fights. And that's not how you create an advantage. And that right there is C9's fundamentals. They are so good at outsmarting their opponents. In this case, it was through a capitalization upon the conditioning they'd given Leviathan. In previous cases, it was through great util usage, it was through creative off angles, and it was through going insanely fast. But in, in all cases, the common theme is that C9 essentially just cheats and ends up with an advantage. And the next question, the final question of this video is, what do they do once they have this advantage? And this, again, is shockingly simple. Simple enough that if you're in a five-man with your friends, you can do this. Um, if C9 gets a 4v5 advantage on a three-site map, there is always, just mathematically, it's a, it's a proven fact, there is always going to be one site with one or zero players on it. There is no way that there can't be. And now, the window you have between identifying that site with one or zero players on it, and there no longer being one or zero players on that site, is extremely short, because defenders rotate really fast. So the second that you identify that site that is weak, the execution onto that site cannot be delayed. It must be extremely decisive. And usually, if you can get the spike down with a player advantage, it's a free round. So let's start by jumping back. They've just gotten the pick on the raise. What's the next thought? Well, they know that Leviathan just did a three-man push down A, which leaves one player, the Viper and the Killjoy, on both C and B. Now, B is significantly closer to A than C is. So, C9 wants to rotate to C to give them more time to execute onto the one-player site. Let's see how fast they can do it. You told that got sent out because of the omen smoke, all that sort of thing. 
And I like how Zeppo was saying, they don't end to, but... I think one thing they do is take huge advantage of little protocol mistakes. And as you can see, it doesn't go well for C9. Killjoy had all of her utils set up and made it absolutely impossible for C9 to break through as fast as they needed to to be able to capitalize on the fact that only one player was on C. By the time that Killjoy util was dealt with, Leviathan had rotated. So, C9 back off and go back to probing sites, back to neutral. They probe B and counter resistance. So, Rooney is communicating that he's heard Leviathan rotate from A. So it's time to run to A. Again, they're just trying to execute onto a site with zero players. And look at how fast they've done it. Rooney's walked up here. He's a landlord. He's just evicted Leviathan out of their house. Jake's already on site as well. Neon's sprinting in. And by the time Leviathan are out of B, C9 have full A control. Look at how fast they've taken the space. Look at how fast the spike's going down. Look at how well the omen smokes are blooming. It's such a bad spot for Leviathan. Rooney on a big flank here. With a snake bite repeat, takes out Shy as well as Mazzino. Gets traded, unfortunately. But Jesus, what a flank. Meanwhile, King takes Jake right as Zeppa takes Nowser. It's now a 1v3 situation for King. He's not even on the site. Horrendous overconfidence from Zeppa gets punished. Takes a fair fight for absolutely no reason. But still, King in a 1v2 situation. 25 health, spike ticking, and a dream. What can he do? King playing quietly. Nice out. King on a big flank here. Goes up the rope, walking quietly. Who's he looking for? What's he going to find? Actually, turns out King's trying to save. And punished. Absolutely punished. Like all savers deserve. What a wuss. And it's with that decisive round win that I want to end this video. Hopefully you understand why I'm so excited about C9. They have a great fundamental understanding with the skills to back it up. And when they're on, it's in how decisive they are in creating their advantage and then capitalizing on it that I, I just don't see it in other teams. Um, good luck to the boys going into the weekend. Um, partly because I got some money on them. Mostly because I'll look really bad if they lose. Um, and if they do lose, you can expect a video explaining why NRG is going to win VCTNA. Uh, see everyone. This is editing Matt, and I want everyone to know, <laughs> C9 just lost, I just watched it, just watched it happen, I'm still gonna release the video, fuck it, but uh, yeah, bit of a yikes, <laughs> a little bit of a yikes, it's all good, anyway, hope you have a great day, guess there's gonna be a video about NRG, guess I'm gonna make one about them, so, see you guys.